It's been a while since I've made a video, and in the past week, Toronto FC have made a lot of moves. So this video is going to be a little bit different. Instead of focusing in on one topic, I'm going to do a little bits and pieces of the three major things that Toronto FC have done in the past week. First things first, they signed Subasa Endo and Jordan Hamilton. Let's start off with Hamilton. Hamilton had his contract ended at the end of the 2018 season, and it looked like his time with TFC was up and that he could potentially be heading to the Canadian Premier League until they just now have re-signed him and given him a new contract. He is a 22-year-old Canadian striker, domestic player, and honestly the fact that he's only 22 surprises me and I forgot that he was that young because he started playing for this team back in 2014. So he's been around for a while, yet despite that he's only 22, still very young. This season for him, with the lack of offensive depth that we have, I think, especially if Tosin Rick is gone, this season is the perfect time for Jordan Hamilton to step up and prove that he can be a regular scorer in MLS. He played 14 games in MLS last season, scoring two goals. He needs to do better than that. He probably can do better than that. But with re-signing him, Toronto FC just has more striker depth than we thought we had. And if he can find another level to his game, he will be a magnificent player for this team now and in the future. Tsubasa Endo. I love this man. He's just so much fun. Not the best, most technically skilled player, but just great personality, fan favorite. Everyone loves him. He had his contract terminated by TFC at the end of 2017, was without a club for half a year for the beginning of 2018 until he was signed to a USL contract with TFC2, where he was just far, far too good for that league, scoring eight goals in 14 games to end up the season, was TFC2's best player from when he joined them straight up to the end of the season, was basically the only person who was consistently scoring goals for that side, and earned himself a spot back with TFC with that performance. He's not going to be a game changer for TFC, he's not going to be a huge offensive catalyst, a great addition offensively, but he's just a familiar face, a good bench option, a guy who can come in, maybe create something late in games, and a well-loved figure in the dressing room, which is probably needed. The second piece of news of TFC this week is Nick Hagland has been traded to FC Cincinnati for $200,000 in general allocation money, $100,000 in target allocation money, and the top spot in the allocation order. Now I could go on about how this money is going to help TFC in the, um, and build up for a big move and the top spot in the allocation orders means that they're probably bringing someone in, but I've been talking about that a lot. I feel like I've been repeating myself for like five videos in a row now. So I'm going to talk about what Nick Hagelin was for TFC and what he's going to be for FC Cincinnati. For Cincinnati, Hagelin is born and raised in Cincinnati. He's basically a hometown player, someone for the fans to be able to cheer for. He's a solid defender off the bench, great in the air will possibly get starting minutes with a new expansion side. And he leaves behind a great legacy at TFC. His goal against Montreal to push overtime in the 2016 Eastern Conference Final is just one of the signature moments in TFC history, in this team's history. And he will forever be remembered for that goal. So Nick Hayland, I wish you luck in Cincinnati. Hopefully you can do something magical for your Childhood City's team. And the third piece of news that's come out from TFC in the past week is this morning it was announced that Gregory Van Der Veel was basically kicked out, I think, of Toronto's training camp. He was sent on a plane from California back to Toronto and basically right now the team's wondering what to do with him. Last year, when Van Der Veel was healthy, he was great for TFC. He wasn't healthy very often. Apparently, he did not like the role he had with the team. He did not like being one of the back three. He wanted to be an attacking player. He likes to be more of an attacking player. And, like, he has been marked as a problem player in the past. So it's not surprising that he'd have a disagreement with Vanny that could possibly lead to him getting essentially kicked off the team. Now, this leads to a major problem for TFC though, as we are now in the market for another defender, which the CMON transfer should have solved our defensive issues, and we shouldn't have now need to look for another defender in addition to having to shore up our offensive um, shortcomings. So now we're looking for another striker, another attacking midfielder, and another defender. Also, because we've essentially kicked Van Der Veel out, we now need to sell low on him because 
he's not going to play for TFC ever again, probably. So everyone knows now that we need to get rid of him and the asking price is all just crumbled because we have to get rid of him and it's a buyer's market. So basically where we're at right now is the CONCACAF Champions League starts in a month, MLS starts in a little bit over a month. We need to sign a striker who can play behind Giovinco and Altidore and be a starting striker when one of them inevitably get hurt. A attacking midfielder to replace Victor Vazquez, and now a defender to replace Vanderveel. All I have to say is, Ali Curtis better be doing something soon, or else things are going to start to get ugly.